new truck, new adventures. We got uh, the Tundra Adventures in the winter and the uh, Tacoma Adventures in the spring and summer, fall. Along with the FXR Adventures, like, obviously. If you are looking for a new Toyota Tacoma, go see Matt Collins out at Western Toyota in Cornerbrook. Time for the second snack of the day. Well, at least we're seeing some wildlife. Four moose and a bear so far. Now we just need to see a caribou jack. Well, they sure have fixed up this road since 2012 when we took our youngest daughter to university. Passing along Lloyd's River back then, there was alders scraping both sides of the vehicle and washouts in the road. Now, there are less potholes in the road than there are in the Trans-Canada Highway. Where do you want to stop? We're here? Or the other side? Some water running here, Jack. Oh, There's a big city right there. I felt it would be a long shot to catch any fish today because of the snow melt and the heavy rains. Yesterday, they called for 70 millimeters of rain south of here. And according to all the water we encountered, I'd say they got that much and more. No, well, we're in, a, we're in the shelter side. This will be a good spot to stop and try for a trout. This was once an amazing pond for catching big trout, and it still might be. Well, at least it was good to get the side by side out for a run. On the main drag, we cruise between 25 and 30 miles per hour. Much slower on the side roads we took. We covered over 60 kilometers on side by side today, and it was good to get out riding in the country. Might get something there. All right, out with the old yeah. Kawasaki and a madman. The old car sucking in the old man, eh? <laughs> the old man. Yeah. That's it. He's gone. Time to go fishing. We got a little pond here that we're going to uh, give, a, give a try. Now, years ago, Jack, when you would say you started fishing that? 25, 30 years ago? 20 for sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, last time we were in here, we figured it was 20 years ago. And here, caribou hunting. And this is what the pond looked like back then and the area. Here's another look at the pond from the opposite side. And here's the part of the caribou trip that I went on. You can see my bow and the caribou coming in the frame. There's a caribou that I'm about to shoot. And there's the caribou that I got on that trip. Here's Jackie's caribou. He got it the next day. And it was another dandy stag. And here is Dad and I moose hunting. Dad is pointing to where we just seen a bull and cow, and now we are in trying to intercept them. Yeah, time to put the waders on, Charlie. All right. We took fly rods and spin cast rods and our fly uh, tie, uh, our vests and all that stuff in case we were going to go for salmon or win an ish. We didn't even know where we were going to end up today. But. We're here for a few speckled trout. With the new Tacoma, you never even knew the trailer and side by side was in tow. I must say, it's a very smooth riding truck, and it seems to be getting better gas mileage than my SUV. A win win in my book. Well, no fish today, but it was nice to get out for a ride in the country and see some wildlife and scenic views. Time to put the side by side away. The straps were very hard to loosen after sitting around all winter. I've since sprayed them with deep creep and they work better now than they did when they were brand new. I must say this tandem 
trailer really does a good job towing side by side. You don't even know it's back there. There goes another Kawasaki mule. Now it's just a matter of backing it off the trailer and putting it into the garage. Another adventure with Cousin Jack. <laughs> yeah. Getting dressed is an adventure. <laughs> Not as easy as it used to be, eh? <laughs> another day, another fishing adventure. Today, Caleb and I are in search of some nice trout, three pounds and up. I have to say that these Sims 3 guide pants, waders, and boots have really served me well over the last three or four years. Here comes Caleb now, who also drives a Toyota Tacoma. Should be some good fishing, I'd say. Yeah, yeah I see him. Well, it didn't take long for each of us to rise, hook, and lose a couple of dandies. While using small, barbless flies, this happens more frequently than you'd wish. Well, after about 30 to 45 minutes of fishing this pool, it seems like we've hooked all the hungry trout. So now we move on in search of more pools full of hungry trout in hopes of getting some big ones. Unfortunately, I thought I had turned on the GoPro, but I failed to check it. So until the battery died, every time I thought I was turning it on, I was actually turning it off. And every time I thought I was turning it off, I was actually turning it on. As a result, I miss out on some great fishing footage with Caleb. Always, always, always check your camera. Oh, little one's coming after it now. I'd come to regret leaving my rod case here. These rocks are very slimy, but the Sims 3 guy pants and matching boots sure helps me navigate up this river. When trout fishing, I don't spend a whole lot of time searching for new spots. You kind of know right away if there's any trout there. Yeah. Unless they come out of this, you know. Unless they come out of this to uh, go up to the center of the brook here. Trout are a lot easier to catch than salmon, obviously. And, uh, you know, they are a starter fish here for everybody growing up in Newfoundland. So I'll make a couple of quick flicks here and then go off in search of better pools. Yeah. We decided to try our luck making our way alongside the river in the woods. Good going at first, easy walking, but that will soon change. Jump up in the woods, way easier. Jump up here in the woods is way easier walking. Really has a nice turn to it here. And you got a nice spot there. And there's a big flat pool up here. No. 
out then. But soon the trees got real thick in here, so I had to head back to the brook. Holy, me too. Not quite sure how I'm getting there, but I'm not staying up here. Now this bank is a hell of a lot more steeper than it looks. Well, after taking the quick way down the hill, I got to the river. I think we're gonna have a look at it. Oh, but what a pool! Big pool. This is. I don't like crossing the chute here. As I just said, I don't like crossing across the chute of a pool. Often this is a good place for fish to lie. But here I had no other choice. I had just rose a dandy trout. Nice. That's nice. Oh, I almost had one on. Small one. Oh, he let go. Now this looks like a lovely spot to pitch a tent. Other than the fact that you're right on a game trail. I'm sure you would get visitors maybe in the middle of the night. But the bears don't bother you much here in Newfoundland. I can't tell you how many nights I spend camping alongside of the rivers. Caleb fishing at the head of this pool that we had crossed earlier, down by the chute. It's hard to make good casts here with the alders choking the size of the river. Oh, Jesus. nice trout. Yeah. Nice. I'm going to get my GoPro going. Give me a second. And that was the end of the footage with Caleb because every time I thought I was turning on the camera, I was actually turning it off. And soon the batteries went dead. So this is another evening and I'm out with my cousin Jack. First couple of nice ones I caught right over here. Like, 
fishing now. But they moved down a little bit. Well, I'll string up my rod. In fact, I got another one of those flies in my vest. Well, long story short, I went a little further up the river and I was catching some very nice trout and rose a couple around three pounds. And before long, I had nine dandies on the beach and was limited out for weight. A little bit more line and come right down here, Jack. The two biggest were 15 and 16 inches. So I headed back down the river to show Jack the trout. After Jack seen my trout and heard the stories about the big ones that I was rising, he had to go up and try my spot. Ooh, that looks like a half decent one. Yeah. Nice one. Jack catch a, uh, about a two pound trout here in a second. <laughs> Good luck. A little black fly might be the a little mosquito or something would be the Well, it didn't take long before he started hooking into some fine trout. And then he hooked into this one. But he rose one that was much larger. Looking into the setting sun, I wasn't able to see the black rim of the net, and I missed netting his trout the first attempt. Moments later, Jack passed a big trout over the net. This time, I nailed him.
We're seeing where that black root and that black net. I can't see where the end of that net is. You can come and jack if you can. We let him go. I didn't get the one I lost with those bigger net, eh? On a, on a Charlie Way fly. On a picky summer song. Hang on, let me get my hands on these gills. It was, big, it was as big as this, if not bigger. Keep him in net. <laughs> yeah, it's not going nowhere. <laughs> Keep him in the net, Jackie. Whoops, Jackie. Jackie, look. Oh yes. Jack's trout was later measured and weighed. It was 19 inches long and three pounds. Well, with our limit of dandy trout, we decided it was time to head for home. It was a great evening on the river. Oh, swirling me in behind it there. Every, every cast, little ones. Where's big brother to? Little, 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 get away from it. That's a little while. Come on, let go, let go, please let go. No, sir, you won't let go. Yeah, let go then. This is another evening and Jack and I are out to catch a feed for Mr. Ashley Boyd. Mr. Boyd was in a couple of other videos I did and I believe we were moose hunting at the time. Not so bad, I'll keep them for ash. Nicer one here too, Jack. A 
Wish I had my net down here. There's, there's one eye through there in the water on the edge just below you. I broke his neck. Back in the water. Oh yeah, I see the other one. Jack is down here. Oops, sorry. Right. 